Welcome Amen. to Hannity. We begin Thank tonight with a Fox News alert. Tonight, we are only moments away with my interview with the President of the United States. Donald Trump will join us live on this program. But first, as I said last night, this pandemic, it brings out the very best, unbelievable, inspiring stories of so many. And then, unfortunately, the very worst in our society. Now, the good news, the best far out exceeds the worst. Now, we talk each night about the amazing businesses in this country, the amazing doctors, medical researchers, scientists, nurses, healthcare workers, uh, first responders, other Americans coming together and working nonstop around the clock to beat back this deadly disease. Now, these are the people and the companies. Please keep them in mind and what they're doing. We thank all of them for what they're doing. They, the people of this country, are amazing. Greatest people in the world, greatest country in the world, and we're going to beat this back. Now, just today, the president announced that FEMA has already distributed 9 million N95 masks, 20 million face masks, 3.1 million face shields, nearly 6,000 ventilators, 4,000 this week to New York, 2.6 million gowns, 14.6 million gloves. Additionally, the U.S. has now tested 520,000 Americans for the virus, including 100,000 tests yesterday alone, and it was announced at the task force today that, in fact, you will be able to go to your doctor's office and soon have an answer in 15 minutes. And get this, thanks to some new simple technology, as I was just telling Tucker, ventilators can now be easily converted to service up to four patients at a time. And the announcement by the vice president today, anesthesiologists, they have figured out Apparently, very easy way to convert their machines into ventilators if, God forbid, they are needed at that mass level. But American creativity and genius, well, will make sure that every person is covered. This is the kind of ingenuity. This is America at its best. It is truly inspiring. I hope we see that part of America, even though this is difficult for everybody. Now, sadly, we've also seen our fair share of really bad actors, including those who are now using a national emergency for personal political gain, and some of the usual suspects in the media mob, Democratic Party, same people that have hated Donald Trump for three straight years, three plus years. They are rushing to blame every problem in the world on Donald Trump. I used to kid around and say if Trump cured cancer, they would impeach him for that. Well, I don't think I was too far off. Now, the usual suspects, they can't even credit the president for that one gutsy decision. Ten days after the first known case of coronavirus in this country, that was January 21st, he instituted the travel ban and then the quarantine. That day, Joe Biden called him xenophobic, hysterical, and a fear monger. The mob and the media criticizing the president over and over. Tens of thousands of more Americans likely would have contracted this disease. We'd be in a far worse position than we are today. Many likely would have died. And now even New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and New York City Mayor Comrade Bill de Blasio, they are playing the blame game. We're going to analyze this. No doubt we are in New York. And guess what? This city is now the epicenter for the disease in the United States. Hundreds are dead, tens of thousands infected. This is a real crisis in New York. President Trump, he has directed the federal government to get New York all of the help they desperately deserve. The American people are stepping up also big time, and he has delivered. The president has approved a major disaster declaration for New York, giving them access to billions of dollars. The president dispatched that U.S. Navy hospital ship with a thousand extra and additional hospital beds if needed. It's on its way to New York Harbor this weekend, weeks earlier than they had planned. The president has ordered the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They are going to be building and constructing four temporary hospitals in four specific counties in New York. 4,000 additional beds. He has sent the National Guard to help the state with logistics. FEMA has built an additional hospital at the Javits Center with another 1,000 beds. The administration, as I mentioned, they have sent 4,000 ventilators to the state of New York this week alone, and hundreds of thousands of masks and gloves and other medical gear, all earmarked for New York. The right decision, and it's being mobilized at an incredible speed. All told, the state of New York will get tens of billions of dollars from the federal government, separate and apart from the new $2 trillion stimulus bill. Now, governor of New York said, well, we're only getting $3.5 uh, billion. 
well, Chuck Schumer, the senator in New York, who actually helped craft the bill, and he happens to be the minority leader in the Senate, he says, no, Andrew, it's more like 40 plus billion dollars and likely much more. But again, the governor, Andrew Cuomo, New York City mayor, comrade Bill de Blasio, they have made now finger pointing and blame a constant refrain, repeatedly returning to what is a false narrative, constantly going on television, fear mongering and complaining, we need more. I need 30,000 ventilators. Why don't I have 30,000 ventilators? They're getting the support they need and they're blaming the federal government over and over again. It needs to stop. Take a look. So it should have been one of the easiest no-brainers in the world for the U.S. Senate to include real money for New York City and New York State in this stimulus bill, and yet it didn't happen. Uh, New York City only gets $1.3 billion from this package. Uh, that is a drop in the bucket as to need. The stimulus bill is not everything I think it should have been. Okay, here's the package. It gives us $3.8 billion. The whole is as big as as high as $15 billion. How do you plug a $15 billion hole with $3.8 billion? You don't. We need everything in that federal stimulus bill, and we need more going forward. And this is not um, looking a gift horse in the mouth. No one uh, thinks it's enough. Everyone agrees there's more that has to be done. Now, we got to separate facts from fiction. Truth matters. I have a message for Governor Cuomo and for Comrade Bill de Blasio. First, the president doesn't write bills. So you might want to first talk to your good friend, Senator Chuck Schumer. Uh, he's the minority leader in the U.S. Senate. He was responsible right up to his eyeballs writing this bill, not President Trump. The president and Washington, they have, rightly so, moved heaven and earth to help New York and New York City. But this needs to be said. Both of you need to stop politicizing this national emergency. And while we're at it, New York State and New York City have some of the highest taxes in the country, which is why, to both of your credit or blame, this is the number one state in the country where people are leaving a mass exodus out of your state and out of your city. Now, last year, the state of New York spent $170 billion. City of New York spent another $90 billion. Now, this is also a fact. Now, we all know the first World Trade Center bombing happened. We all know the world changed on 9-11-2001. And we also know that New York City is the number one city for possible terrorist attacks. And New York City is an international city with the highest concentration of people in the smallest area thus making New York City the most vulnerable of any city in the country to a pandemic like this. Now, with all that Washington has been doing, and you pointing more, I need more every single day, while they've been doing this, well, we're now seeing how unprepared both the state and the city of New York have been for any emergency, which is unforgivable to me as a New Yorker, born and raised. Now, that's on Governor Cuomo. It is your third term. De Blasio, second term. The level of preparedness is beyond shocking. Now, we don't really have time to get into all the particulars because we have more important matters to deal with. But the state should have had larger stockpiles of medical supplies and masks and ventilators. Apparently, you are prepared for little to nothing. Now, instead of, by the way, stocking up on emergency supplies, well, we do have a list of your waste, your fraud and abuse. Governor was spending on his pet projects. Instead of stocking up on emergency supplies with that amount of money they take in every year and the high taxes they, they cost every New Yorker, Cuomo was busy wasting taxpayer money on, oh, let's see, $750 million for a solar panel factory. Yeah, that closed down. Right down the tubes, wasted money. I wonder how many ventilators, masks, gowns, medical equipment they could have purchased for all that money. $90 million, Mr. Governor, for a light bulb company in California. Yep, that failed too. $600 million for a computer chip factory that sits empty in your state. And get this, it was 2015, Cuomo warned that New York would need additional ventilators to manage any future pandemics, but he chose not to buy any. Instead, he assembled a task force to determine how the state's 2,000 ventilators already on hand would be rationed. Now you'll be happy to know, Governor, that we can now convert 
those anesthesiologists' equipment into ventilators, and you got 4,000 more from Donald Trump and from Mike Pence and the task force this week. This is your third term. This is your second term, Mr. Mayor. They should have been more prepared. You need to own up to your mistakes. And, Governor, you said to me on my radio show, we actually had a very good exchange. You said to me you wanted to put politics aside. But you know what? You keep bitching and complaining and moaning and groaning every day and giving out false numbers. Oh, it's only three point, a pittance, 3.5 billion. Talk to Senator Schumer. He contradicts that. You've been given far more than any other state in this country. Five hospitals are being built for you, paid for by the taxpayers all across the country. You have 40 plus billion dollars on the way, a Navy hospital ship, five other hospitals being built for you. Start owning your own failures to prepare for emergencies, and maybe you should stop wasting the hundreds of millions of dollars that you take from people like me. And by the way, Maybe it's time to once in a while say, I want to thank the president, his task force, and the vice president for knocking down every door and giving us everything we're asking for and going all in to help New York, because that's what they are doing. Now, meanwhile, this week, we saw the very best and worst, as I said, in America. Well, the worst also on Capitol Hill. On one side, Republicans have been fighting since way early last week with extreme urgency to get money into the hands of our fellow citizens that need it. I've never seen Majority Leader McConnell this ticked off and animated. And God bless Susan Collins. She rightfully apoplectic, saying, where is the urgency? Pleading with her Democratic colleagues to get this done. Democrats, they were dragging their feet every step of the way. No urgency. James Clyburn, well, he told us why they were using this national crisis to restructure things to fit our vision. Hmm, we're in the middle of an emergency. Maybe it's not time for politics like that. And after wasting more than a week fighting for wind and solar and carbon emission standards and environmental regulations to kick the airline industry when they're down, to protect the illegal immigrants and other new Green Deal garbage, Democrats finally agreed to a bill. And by the way, that just passed the Senate unanimously. We got some of it out, not all of it. Republicans had to suck it up because they have the urgency to help the people that need it. Almost none of their wish list items, some of them, didn't make the final cut. Well, they did get their $25 million for the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts that none of you, I bet, are ever going to go to. $75 million for PBS, NPR. Oh, by the way, NPR stations, uh, many of them won't even broadcast the daily coronavirus task force briefings because they hate Donald Trump. The Democrats' wish list had nothing to do with the coronavirus. And now this bill, yep, Republicans had to suck it up. They didn't want to because they know the American people need help. Small businesses need help. Frontline workers in the medical community need help. Trillions of dollars we needed to get there sooner. And by the way, undoubtedly, spending on this, by the way, that they're using, some of it not necessary, some of it wasteful, sad. Republicans were pretty much blackmailed into wasting a fortune to get the money, and they did compromise. They did vote for the bill. They tried to get out as much of the garbage as they could because American workers, medical professionals, small business owners, and big business corporations devastated by this need help now. What you see on your screen represents major relief for everybody who is struggling through no fault of their own. Americans don't have a problem helping their fellow Americans until we all get through this crisis. And tomorrow, we expect it to pass in the House. Why didn't they do it today? Reason you, you guys busy? What, you, you making up new articles of impeachment? What were you doing? Going on vacation? All right, but ultimately here, despite the pork, the Democrats, this is a win for American workers. Money's on its way. Businesses, hospital, first responders, thank you all for what you do. We're sorry you have to go through this period. Your fellow Americans have your back. It will help make you whole. It will bridge the gap. You can pay your mortgage, your rent, your car payment, your health care, get the medicines you need until we get this country back on its feet, which the good news is every American I talk to wants that to happen sooner than later. And by the way, as you might also expect, yeah, if you were watching, uh, let's see, Conspiracy TV, MSDNC, Fake News CNN, Reading the Washington Post, Doom, Gloom, 24-7, uh, you know who, who to blame. President Trump, of course. Take a look. Larry Kudlow and Stephen Moore and Donald Trump and people for Catholic magazines mm -hmm. are saying, you know, just people, 
you know what, people have to die. There is really no way of knowing how many lives were affected by that false sense of security that the president projected. The briefings are working for the president. No matter what he says, people seem to be seeing him as a leader, at least more people do. A few weeks ago, the president was calling this a hoax. Yeah. Fast forward to today, he's okay with putting a $2 trillion package together to help us? No, he was putting in place a travel ban because he took it seriously. He was saying those politicizing it, oh, that's like their new hoax. I said that. But I also had uh, uh, Dr. Fauci on my radio show, TV show, January 27th on through, and I warned this is bad. Some have also blamed yours truly. Claim we have blood on our hands because we didn't take the virus seriously. Just go to Hannity.com. I have a whole list of everything that I put up there. The media mob, they shouldn't sh throw stones from their ivory glass towers. Take a look. People should be more concerned right now with the flu in this country. A lot of people are concerned about the coronavirus because they're hearing a lot of news about it right now. But the reality is comparing it to the flu, for example, it's not even close to being at that stage. What if it is worse? Is this a moment where maybe countries put politics aside, a little bit of pride aside? And do we have U.S. officials? Should U.S. professionals such as yourself get involved? How worried should Americans be about coronavirus? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. The U.S. State Department has now raised its China travel advisory now to level four. Do not travel, citing the outbreak of the coronavirus. This is important. we got to get this right. Right here on Hannity, we give you facts. We're Americans, land of the free, home of the brave, without fear. We're not alarmists. We raise concern about this virus, yep, from January 27th with Dr. Fauci on this show forward. We praise the president's travel ban. By the way, he got excoriated for it. How many thousands of Americans didn't suffer as a result? Anyway, we're reporting facts without fear. The mob and the media more interested, doing what they've been doing for three-plus years, hating Donald Trump. On the very same day of the president's travel ban, Vox.com, they hate me too, criticize him, overreacting. Is this going to be a deadly pandemic? No. February 1st, oh, the Washington Post, get a grip, America. The flu is a much bigger threat than the coronavirus. February 3rd, same paper. Why we should be weary of an aggressive government response to coronavirus. February 5th, the New York Times. Uh, who says it's not safe to travel to China? The coronavirus travel ban is unjust. The despicable, corrupt media mob cares more about hating the president than anything else. You know the New York Times, the one that said, the Trump virus, if you're feeling awful, you know who to blame. Americans know this. We are not blind. Look at the Gallup poll. Media's handling of the coronavirus. Yep, lowest marks of any other group in America. By the way, I think that number's too high. Even worse than Congress. And that's saying something. Presidents, never been higher, above 60%.